So let's say that you have a physics exam. And in that exam, they say, hey, you can bring in your own little cheat sheet, put down whatever you want on there, and you can bring that in. So what if I had to make that, and what, what would I put on there? Well, I might not put anything, but you know, I already, so you gotta realize, if, if I've been doing, I've been teaching physics for 25 years, and you kind of just already remember these things. So I don't really have to do that. But if you're new, you do have to write those things down. So I'm going to write down the things that I would recommend that you might put on your cheat sheet uh, to help you do great at physics. And this is just for a test that would be on the electric field and electric potential. And I will include at the end stuff about Gauss's law. But if I was teaching this class, I would not. I would not put that in there. Okay, so the very first thing is let's get let's get the basics down. Uh, I'm going to write down Coulomb's law. So if I have, uh, I would write. Let me write. Hmm, okay, I'll put a plus there and a minus here. So here's two charges, and there is some vector position. Let's just call this vector r. I'll make it simple. R is a vector from the positive to the negative. Then the the force on the negative, this would be an attractive force, would be negative, wait, is it negative? No, it's not. It's one over four pi epsilon naught, Q1, that's Q1, Q2, Q2, R hat over the magnitude of R squared. That's Coulomb's law. So, you have to realize, and I think that's important here, one, this is just a constant, and I'll put the constants at the end, because I don't know if you need to memorize your own, write down your own constants or not, but we'll go through constants. The other, the thing is that a lot of people would write this as this F equals this times Q1, Q2 of R squared. That's fine and all if you just calculate the force, but if you have more than one force, more than one charge interacting, then you have to add the forces as vectors. And that's the most important thing. This is a unit vector r hat that tells me that it's in the opposite, or it's in the same direction as the force. Well, it'd be negative because one of these charges is negative. Okay, so that's an important thing, but that's Coulomb's law. The next is the definition of the electric field. And I'm gonna try to keep this as simple as possible. So the electric field is defined as the force divided by the charge. So if I have some charge and it's in some region then there's a force there's some force on it f due to some other charges or electric fields then i can define that and this is a charge q i could take that charge away and find the electric field that would cause that this is the force per unit charge so i can put some other charge there and find the force on it by multiplying by the charge. So this is just the definition of the electric field. Uh, it's just like the gravitational field. I wouldn't write this down. G is uh, Fg over the mass, right? It's the force per unit mass for the gravitational field. This is the force per unit charge. And then if you want to, you could write this. E equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over the magnitude of R squared r hat and that's the electric field due to a point charge that's very important and i actually like this better than this because you can always find the force if you just wrote that down i i wouldn't i would write down this and this i mean you don't need to write that down too right okay now there's a bunch of uh special situations where you may have to find the electric field uh, due to certain charges and yes you could use gauss's law and i'll show you that in just a second uh, you could write down special formulas like the electric field due to a dipole, the electric field due to a plate, the electric field due to a charge ring, but I don't know that, that, that knowing those values would help if the test question says derive those things. They'd probably tell you. But I might do something like this. It comes up a lot. If I have, a, a, I would put down like an example of a charged rod of Q length L and I want to find the electric field, let's say, over here. The, the key thing here is to write down an expression. Remember that uh, dx is the, the, the length of this little piece. I need to break this into a bunch of infinitely small pieces. And I could say de, I would write this, de equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught dq over r squared r hat. And then I would say right here, I'd put this as an example to remind myself, dx 
over dq equals L over Q. That tells me the ratio of the charge to this little piece to the total piece uh, is the same. And you can use that to find, to replace dQ and get that in terms of dx. Yeah, you, you should be able to do a problem like this. Uh, it's, it's, you know, that's very likely going to come up. And remember, this is R, and you need to get that in terms of X. This is X. So I've kind of put some notes in here for something like this, just so you can remember how to do a problem like this. Uh, and then if it's, an, if it's a similar problem, you can break it into other ways, too. Okay, so that's the electric field. Uh, let's jump to the electric potential. I'm looking over here. Okay. So for potential, I would start with this. I would say delta u equals the integral from 1 to 2 of f dot dr. This is the definition of the change in potential energy negative the change in potential energy, right? So if you go back to your previous physics course, we said that if the force is conservative, if it doesn't depend on path, then you can find the potential energy this way. So if I do that with uh, an electric field, then this would be equal to negative from one to two Q times E dot dr. And dr is just an element along the path, It's because it's a path integral. And then I can, factor out the Q, the charge, and divide both sides by charge, and I get delta U over Q equals delta V equals negative the integral from 1 to 2 of E dot dr. This is the definition of electric potential. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's essentially the, war, the change in potential energy per unit charge, and we use units of volts for that. But it is, it is an, a path integral. Okay. Um, and so you have to go from two points. It's a change. You have to have two points. Uh, now, if you do this, and you should do it at least once, if you do this for a point charge and you go from infinity to R, you get what we call the potential due to point charge, just V, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R. And it's a scalar value, right? And this is with respect to infinity, but it comes up all the time and it's super important. So I would go ahead and write that down. That's the potential due to a point charge. I'm looking at my notes here. Um, yeah, I think I think that's that's it, right? If you have if you understand this definition of potential and and this is the potential due to a point charge, so that you have more than one point charge, you just add up the potentials. Then you're really set. You can do pretty much everything. Um, if you know the electric field, you could find the potential. Maybe he, maybe they give you an expression for the electric field, and you can integrate along a path to find the change in potential. That's something that may come up too. Okay, I want to go. Let's go ahead and do Gauss's law uh, because I wouldn't put it in here. I wouldn't put it in this test, but it it comes up a lot. So the first thing is the definition of flux. The electric flux is defined as a surface integral of E dot n hat. That's a hat, dA. So this says that it's a surface area integral over the area of the electric field dot n hat, where n hat is a unit vector pointing normal to or perpendicular to the surface. Gauss's law says that if I do this for a closed surface, so if I do a closed surface surface area integral n hat dA, that's going to be equal to the total charge inside of that Qn over epsilon naught. That's Gauss's law. Now, you may want to write down a couple examples of how this works. You know, what if I have, this is the most a very common one, what if I have a solid uh, sphere of charge? How do I find the electric field everywhere? You, you know, the key is to pick a surface where we know that the integral of E dot dA is going to be easy. So, but here you're going to need to remember that the surface area of a sphere. So now let's let's put down some other math stuff, right? So I need the area of a sphere is going to be 4 pi r squared. The volume of a sphere, you're going to need that, is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Uh, you need the area of a cylinder. I don't even know why I'm putting this down. That would be um, pi 
2 pi r squared, right? That's the area of the end caps plus 2 pi r l. That's the surface area of the cylinder. Usually this one, if we're doing this for electric field and electric flux, that's probably going to go to zero. So you're only going to have that. Uh, the volume would just be 2 uh, pi r squared times l. Um, the area of a cube. I'm not going to do that one. Uh, you might want to write down things like uh, what is the dot product, right? Let's put down some other stuff here. So if I have vector A dot vector B and A is the vector AX, AY, AZ, and B is the vector BX, BY, BZ, then A dot B going to be AX BX plus AY BY plus AZ BZ equals the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them. So that's the dot product. Um, Okay, so if you have space, you could also write down some example problems. I mean, I don't know if that's allowed or not. You, I definitely want to check with your with your instructor and say, can I put example problems on there? I would do um, E due to two point charges. I can't write. V due to point chart to due to two points or more. Um, e due to a charge distribution due to due to two so this would be like uh, the thin rod or disc or um, something like that the electric potential due to a charge distribution uh, some Gauss's law examples I never remember, is it Gauss, G-A-U-S-S, apostrophe S law? I think it is, but um, I'm trying to think what else. Okay, then then let's finally, let's get to some constants. Okay, so what constants should you write down? Well, there's definitely this one. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught equals K. A lot of times they use K for that. And that's easy to remember. It's 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meter squared per coulomb squared. Uh, another one that you would that you definitely might have to worry about is the charge, the fundamental charge, right? E, the charge of electron is 1.6. It's 1.6 times 10, that's right, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 11th? Good thing I wrote down, yep, no, 10 to the negative 19th. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. You could write down the mass of the electron, the mass of the proton. Um, I don't know that you're gonna need those things. Um, you could de write down the definition of the electron volt. One electron volt equals 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. It's a unit of energy. Um, you could write down Avogadro's number. I don't think you're going to actually need that. Uh, the speed of light. Um, three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Okay. So that's those are the kind of things I would put in my cheat sheet. But again. Having a good cheat sheet is no substitute for being prepared for the test, okay? Just because you can cram a bunch of stuff on there doesn't mean that you're going to do on the test. So make sure you work problems, practice problems, uh, you know, read the textbook, ask your faculty, your instructor questions if you get stuck. Don't wait till the day before, ask them a week before, uh, and then get a good night's sleep for the test as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.